Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, one's scratching my sofa, my cat's scratching up my sofa. All right, guys, what is happening? Welcome back, guys, to the YouTube channel. The you Ashley Club. Can't you can't just start without me even looking, okay? What did he say? What do you mean? You need to calm me down. Hi guys, welcome back to the, the YouTube, YouTube channel. channel. Still trying to work on our content. Still got a lot of things going on, guys. So today we're gonna be doing. Uh, uh, <laughs> we're gonna call this "I Wish." Okay. okay. I got this inspiration from a Spotify podcast that I've been listening to called Islamic Feelings. I am gonna tag it down below. Honestly, amazing podcast. She did a podcast that I listened to where she asked people, some of her followers what they wish so it was like a, i wish and then they would complete the sentence and then she spoke okay. about everyone's wishes so is that what we we're doing then? yeah so okay. i reached out to my followers on instagram and a few of them replied a little lash and a little eyebrow this person said i wish to succeed in life somehow before my mother passes okay and i feel like you can <laughs> relate to this quite a lot wow that's a yeah see the first one already big deep because I was just thinking, you know what, actually, that's so true, because the last time I spoke to my mom, I was I was doing my first personal training course. So I'm, there's like two cameras because we're on a live. Um, but yeah, so I was I did my first personal training course, which I didn't complete. And my mom actually got proud that, you know, I was pursuing, you know, a certain career in my life, uh, moving forward and, you know, seeing me trying to break the barrier. She was happy. Right. That's the whole point. And. I wish I could have told her that, you know, I gave it a second try after failing the first time and I actually completed my course, succeeded, got my level three. Um, I've got all the knowledge, but it's just a career that I haven't fully stepped into yet because I've just got a lot of other things that I'm looking to work on first before fully pursuing it. Um, but yeah, that's so true. Yeah, what and she didn't, she didn't even, you know, hire your, you get yeah. your license. And nah, like, all, all of that, like, like, that. like, like I didn't have any of that. Like, and she was like the most, go-to person for me all the time whenever i succeed in something or like whenever i need someone to talk to or anything she was she was the one <clears throat> so yeah 100 percent. yeah it's, it's it's a big thing i feel like i also have that in me where i'm like i really want to have my mom be like i'm proud of you one day yep yeah, i mean um, you can't you just i still have the chance to but i know it's just so difficult to make my mom proud <laughs> it's like you know yeah but but yeah, we fully understand where you're coming from and inshallah, we do pray that it will happen for you. And if it doesn't, just know that there are other people that are, you know, there to watch you succeed and will be proud of your success as well. 100%. But inshallah, you will. Straight off the bat, right into it, huh? Yeah. All right, number two. I wish I prayed to Allah and was a better Muslim earlier. It's never too late. It's never too late, honestly we are still working on ourselves and it's That's like true. i feel like every muslim has their highs and lows mm. and you should never ever put yourself down when you're low you're low you know yeah. you will get back up as long as you have that intention and that drive and will in you to know that you are trying your best and you will get back up from yeah. it i know we all it's like i want to reach a stage in my life where five daily prayers are you know normal it's like breathing yeah yeah it's like it's like a habit it's like breathing yeah, yeah. like you just you can't go without it mm -hmm. inshallah we reach that stage inshallah. but i feel like definitely we all have our struggles and the main thing you need to concentrate on is your character yeah your manners and how you treat people around you those things will carry you a long way how you treat animals how you treat people you everything know everything you. i would say it's it's good to have challenges, obviously, as a Muslim and for everyone out there, you know, a challenge is it's basically all I can say. It's not the walk that completes the journey, it's the challenges, because without the challenges, <laughs> it, yeah, it's, it's not it's not the walk that makes the journey, it's the challenges, because without it, without the challenges, you know, you're not really going to be able to see what your full potential is, you know, how to counter certain situations mm -hmm. and make the right decisions. Do you get me? Yeah. Because if you, if you just keep going down one straight path, right, you're never going to know how to make a right decision when you encounter those situations again, you know what I mean? When the world splits. So I would say, um, it's a good thing, you know, that you have your ups and downs, but always remember that when you make a wrong decision, you correct it every time that, you know, confronts you do you know what i mean yeah. so it's it's always good yeah. that's my thoughts on it 
this one is very 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 deep and i'm gonna like try to hold back my tears on it because it's like when i say it Why? you're gonna feel it okay <sighs> okay this person said i wish i died when i was a child best of both worlds no pain here jenna in the next life inshallah <laughs> we all want our life to be like a shortcut mm. all the time like we just want the best of it we want the end to be the best and we want to like skip over everything yeah i do get where this person is coming from because obviously it would have been the easiest thing to do but yeah. we need to remember we were when we were in the world before this one there must have been something that allah had showed us for us to choose our life we chose our life right we chose our path allah showed us okay this is the dunya this is the hereafter this is jahannam this is how it's gonna be you can choose you know mm -hmm. i think it was i don't remember the exact hadith but i remember reading it somewhere that we were asked 77 times um whether we wanted to be put on this earth and whether we wanted to go for dunya or the akhir. The akhir. thank you <laughs> but um yeah so there must have been something that we saw for us to choose the struggles that we go through in our life yeah before the soul was put into the body we were asked these questions and then our memories were wiped and then we got sent to the dunya we still have choice of decision do you know what i mean obviously if everything was easy then there would be like what was the point you know we're not gonna be we're not gonna give you a test with all the answers on it are we mm -hmm. that's why you have to make your own decision so when you're given a test in front of you right and you don't revise for it properly you're gonna just guess where to go and yeah. sometimes those guesses can take you down the wrong path yeah. right but if you revise properly, you study properly, then you know which path to go on, you know which answers to go to, you know, you know when you make the right decisions. Just remember that this world is a prison for the believer and paradise for the non-believer. Yeah. So if you're yeah. going through struggles and you're feeling it and you're looking forward to the hereafter, that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. That means that, you know, you have something in the hereafter. If we felt no pain, if we went through no struggles, we should be fearful, we should be scared because that means we don't have anything in the hereafter, you know. Yeah. The more you have in life, the more you'll be held accountable for. Just remember that. Oh, yeah. When it comes to like wealth and stuff like that, the more you have, the more you'll be accountable for. So it's always good to like, oh, yeah. not be at a constant struggle, but be at a level, like balanced out. Yeah, stable. I mean, yeah. obviously you can have a lot of wealth, but as long as you know how to what to, know, do with it, yeah. what to do with it you know divide it equally for yourselves your family and those around you yeah you get me? i'm not saying go around and just give everybody money and you know spend all no, the money on them. actually there will be a time um that will come where you'll knock on people's door trying to give them stuff and they'll have so much that they'll turn you away yeah. and everyone will be like that everyone yeah. will have so much that there'll be no one you can give something to it's actually crazy like we're gonna come to a time like that i wish to find a spouse to spend this life growing in deen with oh, I, mean, I mean i mean, I mean like inshallah you do we both can agree that marriage yeah. is a beautiful thing oh yeah <laughs> you're right <laughs> she's going a bit cuckoo it's like a what's it called beautiful nightmare what do you think that's that's a lyric from a beyonce song right? <laughs> yeah that's what i was thinking about <laughs> this sweet dream a oh, beautiful nightmare yeah. Anyway, advice if you're not married yet, your first two years are gonna be very difficult. You know, there's gonna be a lot of things that you would think, ah, oh, you know, I didn't think that person had that in them. I didn't think that person was like that. You know, so little I, little marriage. To be honest with you, I feel like the first five years are difficult. I'm not even gonna lie. Five years? It was yeah. not. No, two years. Uh, no. Our fifth year was the worst. <laughs> I've heard that from a lot of people that the yeah. second and the fifth year. I've heard that a lot. Second and fifth year? Yeah, I've heard that quite a lot. And seventh, but when we were not there yet, so we can't really speak on that. Yeah. We're gonna get there. I wish my parents understood how I feel. Ooh. Same. Oh, I feel God. like our parents were brought up in especially like us, our yeah. age now. That's why I don't really I don't really deep it too much now. Yeah, like, like we don't really I take it to heart. It. Whereas yeah. I know our kids will take it more to heart because 
we're, we're more easily educated like we have more access to education yeah. than our parents did oh, yeah. you know like our parents didn't know about love languages they didn't know about um abuse they didn't know about yeah. how to discipline a child properly they didn't have access to the education that we have access to we can search up youtube's how to be a great parent whereas with them they just went with what they were what shown their upbringing was. from their ancestors yeah literally everything is so different nowadays like yeah. You have access to anything. anything to teach you. You've got before they had books back in the days, but nobody really paid attention to those. But now you've got it all over your screens. You can even take classes for it. And because there's so much scientific studies going on, people studying the body, studying human anatomy, people studying about children's behavior, they start to upgrade, meaning like they start to increase their knowledge about it and they start to develop new ways on how to counter certain situations and child upbringing and it, yeah, like definitely. and it's just going to keep growing because the thing you have to remember as humanity grows as humanity progression pro progression as humanity progresses um our brain will shift that's why you have so many different people with so many different perspectives because you've got like the gen z's then you've got the what 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 did, millennials and all those other things because they all have different perspectives which means that they all have different ways of raising a child but as the child is being brought up during the progression of humanity their way of seeing things would be very different so you always so people have to create different ways on how to bring up a child the right way there's never really a right way but i think i should show me the right way which is obviously not shouting at them and you know i shout them to be honest yeah I'm but just against physical physical yeah yeah violence. which which was my upbringing which is what i thought was it was mine way. as well but i feel like because i studied childcare. exactly and that's what i mean nuts. my point there you're right i watched a lot of super nanny i'm not gonna lie <laughs> i watched a lot of super what? nanny as a parent you'll never have enough knowledge on how to be a parent you're always learning constantly like every single day you're trying to be a better parent yeah of course. once you become a parent that's all your life is about. I don't know about other people, but for me, I feel like my main goal in life is to bring up my children to be people that other people will be safe around. And that's that would that'll be my biggest accomplishment to know that my kids aren't harming anyone and you know they're just good humans. So this one is I wish to get engaged this year, inshallah, improve my relationship with Allah and succeed in my businesses. I mean, this is a very, very worry. This is a very close friend of ours. <laughs> you get the Ws. Um, so I mean, inshallah, we will make lots of dua for you that all of that goes through with ease and blessings. Inshallah. I wish I can improve my prayer. Well, us too. Same. <laughs> I wish the man I love accepts Islam and marries me. Inshallah. Inshallah. I mean, I mean. That comes with patience. It does. Lots of lots now, of lots of dua. Because it's the same thing with me and her, obviously. So I was in a whole different religion. Um, and when she met me, you know, we were speaking as friends and then they kind of like worked its way up to, you know, bigger things. But at the time it did take me a while, you know, for it to kind of soften up to me and start getting her to speak to me more about Islam and stuff. Not directly to me, but to send me lectures and then, you know, kind of get me more into it. So I'd say don't rush into it, just take your time with it. Um, depending on how comfortable they are, you know, speaking to you about your religion and their interest that they're showing. Also make the intention of that even if I don't get to marry this person, may Allah guide their heart to Islam. Yeah, inshallah. Sure. Allah is the turn of hearts. Mm -hmm. So the only one you can ask is Allah for that. I wish I could meet someone who loves me enough to marry me. Tired of all the talking stages. The amount of girls I know in this place right now is absolutely ridiculous. I feel mm. like nowadays, it's so hard for girls and guys like vice versa to find people that are that they're compatible with let's say yeah <laughs> don't spit in my eye <laughs> yeah. i feel like the right person comes into your life when you least expect them to so just focus on yourself mm. and just build your own character and you know your career your dean Focus on yourself and the person that is meant for you will just follow through and just Oh yeah, hundred percent glide into your life when you least expect it to. But yeah, when it comes to talking stages, just cut it all out. I wish I could always wake up for Fajr. <laughs> Same. There's a hadith where the Prophet mentions or someone mentions, I don't remember. I don't want to say it wrong. So forgive me if I'm wrong. But the two prayers that differentiate a hypocrite and a non hypocrite is the Fajr and the Isha prayers. Mm. 
So like the hypocrites only, and that's because those are the prayers that you pray alone mm -hmm. when everyone is asleep. So Zohar Asr Maghrib, you will usually pray when people are around you, when yeah. you're at work. So yeah. like if you're and praying those... to show, mm -hmm. those are the prayers you'll focus yeah. on. Whereas Isha Fajr, people are usually alone. Or sleep time, so. yeah, they're either sleep or you have to wake up early for it. Like and you have to make the effort to actually get up. Or for Isha, you know, it's it's a big prayer, and you, when you complete it, it's a lot a of people, prayer, it's a long yeah. prayer. So a lot of people look at it as like, oh, you know, I just do the four, I just do this, or I just do that. Um, but they won't really do the whole thing. Do you get what I mean? Yeah. But you, it's that's what I mean. It's how you manage your time, and, you know, your intention on. How you're gonna do your isha and your fajr last one is i wish i had more money so i can give my kids more experiences places to visit or school <laughs> guys we're on the same boat <laughs> right all on the same boat it's so funny that that last one mentioned that because you know how i always say to you like oh i wish we were more financially stable so that we can do this we, we can do, do that, that and, and spend more like, time you don't yeah, need that you yeah. don't need that yeah. Yeah. Kids will not remember material things. Kids will make memories of the smallest things, the that's smallest true. happy moments, mm -hmm. um, the board games, the colorings, the puzzles, it's... the walks, <sighs> okay. even. Like, there's so much you can do. Go on. I was gonna say, it's the comfortability that builds the best memories for them, right? Yeah. So, like, how comfortable you make the child is how enjoyable their experience will be in whatever moment right you could even just be at home like she said playing board games and that could create a memory in, in their head that they'll never forget and and there could be a lot of things when that memory passes that could bring it back to them that could trigger that memory again it's like a file stored in their brain so say like a certain smell or a certain scent that you know was happening in that room at the time or like a certain light accent you know, they, they will remember it and be like, oh, you know, that was actually a good yeah. time, you know? And that's basically all you need. Like all the happy moments I can think about, about my childhood, none of them involve anything material yeah. about you. 100%, yeah. Nothing, right? Like yeah. you remember building stuff in your garden. <laughs> Bro, and... I, I remember a lot, <coughs> a lot of things doing, doing things on my own. Crazy so. things. So yeah. I feel like as a parent, you will always, always want to give your children more and more and more. There's nothing wrong with that. Always have the ambitions and goals to give them a better life. Don't ever just sit down and be like, okay, this is it. Yeah, literally. Always, always have the goals to give them a better life, but always, always know that you can make it work with whatever you have around you. Allah has given us so much resources in this dunya that we shouldn't need so many material things to bring about happiness ever oh, yeah. happiness comes from memories like even you just talking to your kids can be a memory that they'll hold on to for the rest of their life so yeah. with children it's always about making memories and i can tell you now the amount of times we have wasted money on these children <laughs> oh my trying God, yeah. to give them experiences and we literally sit there and we're like we could have just taken them to the park and they would have been happier with that yeah wallahi like last summer literally i think if you watched the last youtube video we went to Legoland, Legoland yeah and we put so much money towards that and it was something i planned for months and saved up for aslan didn't go on one thing he didn't go on a single ride not one thing and the whole time he he cried and complained and the only <laughs> memory that we have from that day i don't know about you but the only memory that i have is the rain <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> it's literally the rain like that's that's the one thing that i connect with the most out of that whole day is the rain go on nature walks play board games yeah. color create stuff with paper create stuff with cardboard yeah. um you know when we went to camping glamping whatever camping. we we bought like these nets and bug little yeah plastic that's things. another one of our youtube videos Kids love <laughs> that. you guys can check it out because we did that we did story time with them yeah um, obviously it depends it just on depends. how old your child is and yeah. everything but, as but the, I, the older they get the easier it is because i feel like the older they get they get more into like watching movies or just talking or card games and or they just want to go out with their friends yeah but pretty you know, much that's if, just like 90 percent of the time something that you want to connect with like i can't wait for my kids to grow up and we can just binge watch netflix series together yeah look at the better things in life like yes i don't have this xyz i can't do this 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 for them but they have health they have a roof over their head they have clothes to wear you know always weigh out your pros and cons and yeah. just be grateful for everything and inshallah 
with gratefulness will come more blessings please 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 if you guys can donate to our charity campaign that we are doing for the month of january oh yeah the step over hunger charity, for charity right? Right? yes yeah we have to do a certain amount of steps every single day which we've been trying our best to do um, well i've been doing my best yeah he's he's been doing both of us <laughs> <laughs> literally literally i think yesterday i did like twenty three thousand two hundred steps yeah but we're gonna <coughs> put the link in the description below if it's a pound whatever it is you guys nothing is less everything oh yeah everything will make a massive difference. it makes a massive difference massive every difference. donation you know you will gain a reward from it inshallah, inshallah definitely um this is for free school meals for children so it will be providing free school meals every single day in eight different disadvantaged countries mm -hmm. and, and that's basically um just to feed them every time they go it's like like free school meals, free school like meals yeah it's literally and like that might be the only meal they get that day so it's a it's, very important part of the day yeah 100 percent. that's yeah. basically what i was gonna say yeah you, you just you just put it into a better perspective for me anyways guys <laughs> thank you for watching don't forget to like share and subscribe and check out our other youtube videos we will try to keep you guys up posted and um click that notification bell we'll see you soon